From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by contributions from three members. The first is Bertha Teed from Riverview, New Brunswick, for the deceased members of her family and for blessings on her children and grandchildren. The second is an anonymous donor from Burlington, Ontario, for deceased family members. And the third are the viewers of the televised Mass for their personal intentions. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Philistines gathered their armies for battle and encamped opposite the Israelites. And there came out of the Philistine camp a champion named Goliath who challenged the Israelites to choose a man to fight him. All the Israelites, when they saw Goliath, fled from him and were very much afraid. David said to Saul, Let no one hearts fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with his Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. David said, The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to, with me, with, to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give you your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day 
to the birds of the air, and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out the stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, striking down the Philistine and killing him. There was no sword in David's hand. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine. He grasped the Philistine's sword, drew it out of its sheet, and killed him. Then he cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Blessed be the Lord. My rock and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues the people under me. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. I will sing a new song to you. Upon a ten-string harp I will play to you, the one who gives victory to kings, who rescues his servant David. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus preached the good news of the kingdom and healed all who were sick. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. The Pharisees watched Jesus to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And Jesus said to the man who had the withered hand, come forward. Then he said to the Pharisees, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. Jesus looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. 
he stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against Jesus how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's go back to the first reading. David and Goliath, the teenage shepherd, goes to battle with the towering giant. Is uh, is David stupid to put his name in the ring with such a formidable opponent? Does he not know how powerful his opponent is? One look at him, and you'd keep well out of his way. One on one in combat, and he'd be sure to win. No Israelite would be foolish enough to venture into combat with this giant. No Israelite, except an unarmed shepherd. I'll take him on, said this perhaps overconfident teenager. King Saul rejected his offer, but David persisted. The Lord has saved me in the past. He will save me, me now. And I think for a moment, if I was in Saul's Shoes. Would I, as king, have given in to uh, such an overconfident teenager? I can hear myself saying, Who does he think he is? And I would have dismissed this overconfident youth. But David persisted. The Lord will save me. And uh, Saul gave in. So, one on one, the battle began. And I can imagine the the shouts and the laughing in the camp of the Philistines. Chalk up one more victory for our champion and one less teenager among the Israelites. The opponents approach each other. The giant in full armor, the teenage shepherd staff in hand, and five smooth stones from the river crossing in a pouch around his waist. They advanced each against the other or towards the other. They taunted each other, the giant mocking the teenager. Come on, and I'll give you a flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. They'll tear you in pieces. But a fearless teenager stands up to him. You come with sword and spear and javelin, but the Lord is on my side. He will deliver you into my hands. I'll strike you down, and I'll cut off your head. Taunts and boasts, back and forth, sizing each other up. And so they drew closer to each other, but not yet as close as a, as a sword's length. So out of reach of Goliath, David quickly reaches into his pouch, takes out a stone, slings it and strikes the giant on the forehead. Probably the one unprotected area of that man's body. Concussed, Goliath fell to the ground. And David took full advantage of his fall. He ran to him, took his sword, ran it through a chink in his armor. And then the rather gruesome detail cut off his head. Gruesome, very gruesome. 
But a teenage shepherd had defeated a giant threatening warrior. Tomorrow's reading will describe the homecoming of uh, David, the hero's homecoming. Maybe a sort of a, an Old Testament Stanley Cup parade will honor the champion. The teenage shepherd will eventually become King David. And the story will continue. History will be made. Heroes and rivalries will uh, come and go. God will have his hands full as he deals with this chosen people and uh, will have his hands full for his son's followers some thousand years later. And you might ask, what's that doing in a Bible? Religion, the relationship between God and his human beings can be very life-giving. Unfortunately, it can also at times be very deadly. Wars of religion have dotted the maps in every century and every continent. And maybe we need to go back to today's Alleluia introduction to the gospel. Jesus preached the good news to the people and healed the ones who were sick. Alleluia. And that was what Jesus really brought. That's what true religion should bring. Resurrection, healing, peace on earth, joy to the world. Come, Lord Jesus. Come and be born in our hearts. That all churches may work for unity and understanding among each other, we pray to the Lord that we may proclaim forgiveness, peace, and hope in our world. We pray to the Lord for those who have asked us to pray for them and for their intentions. We pray to the Lord for the thousands of refugees who seek new beginnings in Europe and in Canada. We pray to the Lord. God of our journeys, daybreak tonight, grant us compassion, strength for the day, wisdom to walk in your way. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, you provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our offering as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion. We ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And with the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just 
our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all our bishops. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with the apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another that peace of the Lord. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go. The Mass is ended. Thanks our thanks to our three donors for the gift of this Mass. Give praise to the Lord. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television. And you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation.